Once upon a time, in a faraway land. What are fairy stories? The strange and wondrous place where nothing is as it seems. Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest? Fairy is a perilous land. Before she found herself falling down what seemed to be a very deep it well. It is the place you visit in your dreams. A world of dream. myth and magic. When the clock began the to chime the night, sailed down through the sky. A mysterious voice began calling to the sad princess. She pricked her finger with her needle. Three drops of blood fell on the In a trance, she window. followed the haunting she sound the of a winding tree. stairway to the top of the you tower. You can read along with me in your book. Let's begin now. Well met, witches. Welcome to the circle of storybook witchcraft. We have a guest storyteller today, Aaron Maza, a queer practitioner of witchcraft who resides in St. Louis, Missouri. They believe that compassion, empathy, justice, and joy are the strongest forces on the planet and have the ability to turn the system on its head. They are a writer and host of their own podcast, The Witching Hour, with Aaron Maza. Aaron shares a tale that has become sacred to their own practice, Streganona, by Tommy De Paola. In a town called Calabria, a long time ago, there lived an old lady everyone called Streganona, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters of the convent went because Streganona did have a magic touch. She could cure a headache with oil and water and a hairpin. She made special potions for the girls who wanted husbands and she was very good at getting rid of warts. But Streganona was getting old, and she needed someone to help her keep her little house and garden, so she put up a sign in the town square. And Big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Streganona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her. And you must fetch the water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said Big Anthony. The one thing you must never do, said Streganona, is touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, si, yes, said Big Anthony. And so the days went by. Big Anthony did his work, and Streganona met with the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed, and he had food to eat. One evening, when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Streganona singing. Peeking in the window, he saw Streganona standing over the pasta pot. She sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry, and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. Then Streganona sang, Enough, enough, pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. And Streganona called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't get to see Streganona blow three kisses to the magic pasta pot. And this is what happened. The next day, when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, 
he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally, everyone laughed at him because it sounded so silly. A pot that cooked by all by itself. You'd better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said. Such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry, and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Some day I will get the pasta pot and make it cook, and then they'll be sorry. That day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought, because two days later, Streganona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain t to the next town to see my friend, Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden. Feed the goat and milk her. And for your lunch, there is some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, do not touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Tregonona, said Big Anthony. But inside he was thinking, my chance has come. As soon as Tregonona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside and pulled the pasta pot off the shelf and put it on the floor. Now let's see if I can remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. Aha, said Big Anthony, and he ran to the town square jumped on the fountain and shouted, Everyone get forks and plates and platters and bowls. Pasta for all at Stregonona's house. Big Aunt Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. And of course, everyone laughed, but ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Stregonona's, the pasta pot was so full it was beginning to overflow. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates and platters and bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and the sisters of the convent. And some people came back for two and three helpings, but the pasta pot was never empty. When all had had their fill, Big Anthony sang, Enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot, so simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. But alas, he did not blow the three kisses. He went outside, and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to compliments from everyone that he didn't notice the pasta pot was still bubbling and boiling until a sister from the convent said, Oh, Big Anthony, look! And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Streganona's house and was coming out the door. Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, and the pasta kept pouring from it. Big Anthony grabbed a cover and put it on the pot and sat on it. But the pasta raised the cover, and Big Anthony as well, and spilled on the floor of Streganona's house. Stop, yelled Big Anthony, but the pasta did not stop, and if someone hadn't grabbed poor Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. Out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta, and the pot kept right on bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By the time the pasta was on the way down the road, all the people were running to keep ahead of it. We must protect our town from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. 
We are lost, said the people, and the priest and the sisters of the convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town, they cried, and it certainly would have, had Stregonona not come down the road home from her visit. She didn't have to look twice to know what happened. She sang the magic song and blew three kisses, and with a sputter, the pot stopped boiling and the pasta came to a halt. Oh, grazie, thank you, Stregonona, the people cried. But then they turned on poor big Anthony. String him up, the men of the town shouted. Now wait, said Stregonona. The punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby and held it out to big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot, Stregonona said. And I want to sleep in my little bed tonight, so start eating. And he did. Poor Big Anthony. Thank you, Aaron. When we next gather, we'll discuss how this story has been influential to their own practice, and how we can interact with the wisdom and lore within this story in our own witchcraft. Until then, may all your travels be filled with wonder. <laughs>